The real voyage of new discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. So often you hear people say like, oh, like I've lived here forever and people come from somewhere else to see whatever your landmark is or whatever and you live in that town and you don't do it. When I was in college and I didn't have a lot of money, I had a friend who was so much into museums and I was taking an art class and I was like, hey, do you want to go to the museum? And he was like, oh God, I would love to go with you. And we went and we had so much fun and it made me fall in love with LA in ways that people who live in LA like sometimes don't get to. Over the years, we've done solo travels apart, like where I've been gone for months. Or I've been gone. Oh, you've been gone. And every time, like, I just felt like that, was, it has been so important for us as a couple because we get to miss each other. It's true. Yeah. And you know what? At some point, I just want to say, like, if we ever got to a point where we didn't miss each other, then it would actually also be really good because then we had necessary time away. That hasn't happened yet. No. I've definitely missed you each time. Though, you know what's kind of funny? What? I generally, if like, if I'm the one who goes, I'm not a big misser of people, which sometimes like hurts people's feelings who I'm really close to, but I'm not a big misser of people. But like the two or three days before the end of any kind of distance from like family or anything, like even like we're going to go see my aunt and uncle this year, like this summer on our trip and I don't really miss them. But I know that like the two or three days before we get there, I'm going to really, really <laughs> miss them. <laughs> and it's like that with you too. Like the last time, granted, when you were gone, I really missed you. That particularly when you're gone for like two months. Oh, that was a long time. Um, but when I was gone, it was great. I was having so much fun or whatever. And then those last couple of days, like, I just can't wait to get home to see you again. I know. And then I remember when I was gone and I came back and it was kind of awkward. I was like... <laughs> literally kind of felt like we were dating again <laughs> we went out to dinner and i was just like sitting there and I'm like i don't know what to do where do i put, where do I put my hands do i put them on my lap do i put in my pockets it was like fidget yeah it was so awkward it was so giggly like hi you know <laughs> how you doing <laughs> i know it was like you know even when we kind of like um like had sex for the first time after I was gone for a while like it was just like awkward you know but kind of well, awkward yes it was a little bit but there was also do you think so I'm gonna like totally like take this on a on a on a 90 degree turn here that like awkwardness could, was that actually any more awkward than when we first started sleeping together or is it just that you've gotten so used to like actually being really in sync and everything kind of going wonderfully that that feeling was like that was awkward, whereas that was just kind of like a reacquaintance time? I'm curious. I don't know. I think maybe because like when we now, like when we're together and I haven't been gone for two months, it's like, you know, we know the last time we had sex. And so when we kind of, yeah, we're in sync, you know. There isn't like, I don't know, we know, like, it's still like, I don't have sex. Yeah. <laughs> but when I'm gone, it just kind of felt like it was like new, like, I don't know, is this the time? Is it now? She just touched my leg under the table, by the way, for anyone watching. Oh my um. God. <laughs> <laughs> you could have like let that go. <laughs> I could have, but I was distracted and I was worried I was going to lose my train of thought and I wanted to blame you <laughs> for my train of thought rather than take responsibility for it. But don't you remember this? Was it I not do. awkward for you? Awkward? I don't know if awkward is the exact word I would use, but were there all sorts of like questions about, am I going to be as good for her as I like to be? Like, have I forgotten anything? Have I lost any of my magic? Um, there's a lot of, kind of, I think there were probably some questions for sure. Um, I don't know if awkward is the word I would use, but it definitely was like memorable in that it was not in the normal flow of everyday life. Yeah. But two months is a long time because I don't know if I, because we've been gone for anywhere from like 10 days to three weeks, qu quite more frequently. And I don't remember, but actually maybe those also, maybe there is also that time of like that kind of re-intro as it were, where you're like, oh, like, hmm. Recently, 
I think I think it happens. Yeah, two months was a long time, but recently you went camping with your friend and I came to pick you up and I just remember like getting dressed, like nice to come pick you up. I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> it was like kind of cute because it's like, it almost kind of felt like I was going on a date. And I was like, I'm just picking Matthew up from camping. Like <laughs> it was three days of not, seeing you and i just think like those moments when we spend apart are like so important for a relationship like i showed up i think your friend was like i don't think he has ever seen me looking so nice like i wore like my new pants and i was like what am i you know like i remember like looking at myself in the mirror doing like makeup i was like on every day like if i'm to pick you up tomorrow and you haven't left like i would not put on like makeup to come see you like it's I don't put put on makeup like on a, you know, every day, not something that would occur. But when you're gone, I put a little bit of effort. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in how I want to look. So. Okay, so we're not at month 11 yet in the lover's journal for doing like being a tourist in our own town, but, um, and we're leaving in six weeks. So I don't know if we're going to have a chance to do that, but I think that that's just a really fun thing to bring in to life. This kind of, you know, this, that adventurous spirit, because I think also, you know, like when you've been in a relationship for a long time and particularly like if you, when there is like, you know, stress or pressure of work or family or all these other things that, you know, that then we're also putting a whole lot of like weight on the importance of oh like the getaway or whatever, as opposed to kind of like, you know, having these, these little pieces wherever we can get them. You know, yeah. and that I think can also really be really important part of like a bigger picture. I was about to ask, like, if you have done like exploring your own city, except like I did it with you in Akuru. I haven't done it with any other partner that I've been with. Oh, actually, that is not true. I went to the museum and when I was in when I was in France with an ex-boyfriend. And I hope he's not listening to this because it was terrible. Um <laughs> Like what he wanted to do was not what I wanted to do. And so I guess like that trip did not end up so good for me. Um, but was it when I was, what I was going to go with this was like when I was in college and I didn't have a lot of money, I had a friend who was like, was so much into museums and I was taking an art class and I was like, hey, do you want to go to the museum? And he was like, oh God, I would love to go with you. And we went and we had so much fun and his thing was like, do you want to go to all the museums in LA taking public transportation? It was one of the nicest years and it made me fall in love with LA in ways that people who live in LA like sometimes don't get to like, you know, most people who live in LA complain like it's huge, you know, and I just really loved living in the city because I went to every single museum. We took public transportation and it was cheap. We packed sandwiches, like we spent zero money. I I was broke, he was broke, but every Sunday we met at the train station and we took the train, we took the buses, and most of the time, sometimes we spend a lot of time, you know, on the bus um, or on the train. And it was one of the most memorable years of like doing that. And you know, when you say like a lot of time, I feel like when you're in your own town, you feel like, oh, let's get there to the destination. When you're on vacation and you're like, oh, we have to go to the airport and then we have to fly someplace. We have to rent our car and then we have to drive for two hours to get to this place we want to go to. That drive, or if you're an American and you're in Europe and you're like, oh, you have to go take the train from here to there. And you think, oh, like that's travel time, but it's totally okay to spend however much time you need to spend on the train or on the, you know, on the underground getting around London or whatever. Like, that's okay, but somehow doing it in your own town isn't unless that's like a part of your travel is like getting to know being a tourist in your own town. Yeah. Yeah, so I I really want to kind of encourage that for anyone. Like, hey, if you can get away, great. Like, God bless you. It's also, it's a challenging time for some people. It's always a challenging time for other people. Um, But to say, hey, you know what? Like, maybe I can just do this little piece and i'm actually hoping we can go spend a day because i heard that by the end of this month they're closing a alexander calder and pablo picasso exhibit at the de young museum which i have never been to and mm. neither of you so uh i'm gonna kind of put that b in this bonnet and see if we can make that happen before it goes away at the end of the month so are we gonna make it a date or we're we just gonna like put on our t- shoes and go 
or well, make it a big deal. Like today we're going to be tourists in our own city. Maybe we need to take the train down to Marin and then take the ferry across to San Francisco and take like the three hours that that would take on public transportation to get there just because. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We'll keep you posted. Now that we've said everything there is to say about travel, we're going to, uh, yeah. Oh, you know what? There was one thing that I did want to share, actually. What did you want to share? Um, I wanted to share the lovely quote for that particular challenge. And that was, the real voyage of new discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. And I think for some people, whether it's a time in their life or wherever, like whatever situation anyone might have been born into that might make sort of traditional traveling more difficult, that the real voyage of discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. Marcel Proust said that, pretty smart guy. And I think that's just a really important piece to bring into like our week this week and also as we're going to go into the summer time in the northern hemisphere and and whatever new trip you may be able to take whether it's a, a trip to the supermarket or whether it's a trip to the other side of the world or across a country whether it's small or large to actually show up with new eyes in any of our travels yeah thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next week take care bye And some of the things that I'm starting to like do, I think I'll be embarrassed to talk to them, to talk about those things to my to my black friends. Like, if you're listening to this, don't tell me I'm drinking whiskey, I am going camping, I'm eating salad for dinner. <laughs> These are all things <laughs> I said I was not gonna do. Um, it's just gonna like it starts to rub on you, you know. I don't know if it's because you like to do those things and I want to please you, but. I don't like I don't know. I guess it's just what happens. You are going to be such a good wife doing things because it pleases me. Oh my god. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and shall we take a brief little moment here to uh reference our sponsor. Uh the Lovers Journal is a wonderful guided journal for couples uh that has uh 52 uh weekly prompts plus uh over 12, I think there's 13 monthly challenges uh, and plenty of room to write other thoughts. It's a wonderful, uh, it's a wonderful companion on the journey of a relationship that any two or more people are on. Meaning like if you're in, if you're a throuple, like literally this would work for a throuple probably fantastically. Yeah, but I think they would need to get Three. You'd probably want to get each have your own. Yeah. Um, and if you're a couple, <laughs> you probably you should get two. Two is great. Though we do have some people who have said they've gotten one and they just actually do it together and they actually kind of like just each kind of like one person writes or do they kind of like take turns, which you know, which is kind of cool. We thought like, oh, that would be sad, but people are really enjoying like sharing one. So it turns out that works really well too. Um but if you haven't yet seen The Lover's Journal or you're interested in knowing more, check out theloversjournal.com. And uh, if you use the code PODCAST15, on top of all the other, like, you know, multi buy, buy one, get discount on the second one offers on the website, you can also use PODCAST15 and get an extra 15% off your order. Um, and when you do get your Lover's Journal, um, make sure to take a picture and tag us on Instagram at uh, Journal for Lovers. And also any questions or thoughts or anything you want to share, like we get these like notes from people that are just so heartwarming. Oh my God. Like, yeah. Really, really, uh, really special actually. Uh, someone said it's like, oh, the, just the other day we got a message. We we're taking Sarah and Matthew with us on this journey we're doing together. And I was like, that's super sweet. A little creepy maybe, but not like, <laughs> uh, but, but really kind of cool because it's been meaning that much to them. So uh, make sure when you go to the website, uh, use podcast 15 for an additional 15% off anything you order on the site. And um, as always, let us know how it goes with your lover's journal journey.